Hi there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. Uh, this is a project we're going to do today. I'm sitting on my porch because it's 83 degrees with a breeze and I just can't bear to be downstairs in my basement studio and the weather is this good. Um, but I did this at my children's art class uh, the other day. It's a Zentangle piece and I'm gonna, I thought it would be a really cool art journal page. So we're gonna work in my Canson XL Mixed Media Journal and you can follow along step by step. I am gonna do a voiceover for this and speed it up a bit because it did take me a long time to do this and I don't want to, uh, I don't want to do that in real time, it just took too long. And uh, I'm going to try out my Reeves pencil, some, a water brush, and I will be accenting with Prismacolor in a little bit. But let's go straight to the tutorial because I'm just ready to color. All right, I've got my microphone. I feel like uh, Frank Sinatra here. i got an actual microphone. I'm using it in my studio. And uh, All right, I'm doing my basic drawing with a number one micron pen. And I'm just using this to get the really thick basic lines in. So any of my major shapes that I'm drawing, like this tree trunk and tree and house and hills and mailbox, I want to get that done with a nice thick pen. Uh, here's another tree. This is more of like a gumdrop tree. And we had a lollipop tree over there. Now we're drawing a Picasso sun, which is, yeah, it's a sun with a whimsical sun rays. Um, you can draw them however you like. I'm just trying to balance out the space and I'm doing that, that little line there. Um, it has a very Picasso Cubist type of type of face there. That's what it reminds me of. Now I'm switching to a number three nib pen and this one's going dry. And you know what? I have a video on how to refresh those pens. Uh, I just posted it the other day. If you want to go to my channel, you can check it out. Um, subscribe while you're there if you're not already subscribed. Now I'm using that number three pen to make a whimsical Zentangle design. This, uh, this little pattern kind of reminds me of a dress my mother used to wear back in the 70s. And I think I might have wore it a little bit in high school. I love those retro patterns. I don't know what you call that, but I'm sure it has a name. And I'm just repeating it. When you set a set of lines, you put a, a framework down, it's so much easier to get a Zentangle pattern in. So since I already had those, those uh, vertical lines, it was very easy to, uh, to put in the swirly ones. And I'm just filling it in here. This took me a uh, quite a bit longer than what the video is taking. I sped this up about 335%. So, you know, you can tell it's, yeah, it's gonna take you some time. I couldn't believe how long it took me to color this and draw this actually. And I'm doing these, um, these wavy lines, kind of mirror image wavy lines for the, um, the grass and hills that are backwards more. And then I'm just doing some perpendicular lines that are kind of curvy and I'm alternating them. So as I go from one section to the next, they're going in a little bit direction. It's just going to give me a little bit of uh, movement, almost a little optical illusionness. It may look really busy right now, but once we start adding color and, you know, painting and coloring, it's really going to um, make it a little more cohesive, um, make it a little bit stronger of a composition. So go crazy with a pattern. You can always unify with color later and have fun. Loosen up. This is a whimsical scene. It is not reality. It should really be fun and you should really let yourself go. Let your creativity and imagination go when you make these Zentangle landscapes. Okay, I think a hornet just kind of zoomed around my legs and freaked me out. That's why I stood up there and my paper had blown away and I had to pick that up. Um, so I wanted to get the look of, um, when I art journal, I often will write my journaling on strips of paper because I tend to mess up. I have terrible handwriting and then I'll glue them down later. But I thought, why do all that work? I think I'm just going to write them out here on the paper and just draw a rectangle around them. And then I'll have that kind of cut paper look that, um, I like so much in my journal, but without the work. And if I mess up, you know what? I can always write it on strips of paper and glue it down over my mistake. Not a big deal. So my, uh, the, the journaling quote that I used was, uh, where we love is home. Home is a home that our feet may leave, but not our hearts. And I forgot that between walking from my studio up here to my computer where I'm recording this, so I had to read it. Isn't that sad? I'm making some kind of Van Gogh-esque swirly designs in the background. I felt like that big sky area needed something, but not anything too overly patterned, but some sort of subtle texture and subtle pattern. So I'm just using swirls. And you can see how I did that without the words um, where I showed you that original one just for a brief second. Now I'm drawing a window on my whimsical house and a door and um, I'm going to put some horizontal lines where I will have some bricky stones there. I don't know if they're stones or bricks. They're very big, so they're probably stones. You could be whatever you want, I guess. Uh, but I did want to keep it kind of a uh, more not random. What's the word? Not meaning random. I don't know. What's what's the opposite of random? Hmm. 
get back to me. Leave me a comment. Let me know what the opposite of random is. Um, a geometric, maybe a geometric pattern, I guess. I am kind of checker blocking the roof. So I kind of like that. I switched to my thicker pen, which is my number one. I'm just using the number one in the uh, 0.03 nibs in my micron pens. I really like the microns and I have a, I just, oh, I mentioned that already. I do have a video on how to reduce them. I just figured it out today. It was actually today, but when you're watching this in YouTube land, it'll be yesterday. Does that make sense? No, it doesn't. But anyway, some, I made that little pattern on the eve of the roof. I like that. I think it kind of helps give it a little bit of a character than just a plain old double line there. And I'm putting some decorations in the window panes, just some, uh, I'm just kind of mirroring the right angles of each of the pane of glass and just kind of making it smaller as I go. Now I'm doing some vertical lines on the house and making my stones, my stony bricks of a geometric design, because it's not random, I guess it's geometric, I don't know. Uh, what do you think of this microphone? <laughs> I think it's better than the headphone one. Uh, I know somebody said my last voiceover, I sounded very serious. Oh my goodness, really me, serious, somber? I don't know, it's different. It's different now doing it live, but honestly, <laughs> it took a long time to do this. It doesn't seem like it should, but it probably took me about an hour and a half to do this entire piece. And that was like, you know, going quickly because I was drawing quickly here. I couldn't quite uh, reconcile it in my head that I was going to be speeding this up. So I was still drawing kind of my quickest. Now I took the uh, thicker pen and I'm adding kind of a little bit of a triangular shape mark where each of the stones intersect just to kind of look like there's some little space in there. Like you've lined them all up and there's some actual texture and space. So that's what I'm going in and doing right now. And it does, if you look at it, it does give it a little bit more substance. And that's what I wanted. I wanted those bricks to seem heavy and I think they did with that. I'm drawing some wood grain on the tree. I hope my squeaky, I'm twirling in my chair. I should stop that. I think it might be squeakiness that is showing up on the microphone. I'm sorry if that's the case. Uh, so I'm drawing just some wood grain and now I'm drawing some leaves in the top of my lollipop tree and just filling it in with those leaf shapes, I guess. What do you call those? Pointy ovals? Pointy oval. Marquee is the actual name. Marquee shapes in there. Now some little scallops on my gumdrop tree. And I'm going to put some lines in our sun rays. I'm just um, mirroring the outside of the sun rays and just kind of adding some more of those lines on the inside just for movement and for style, uh, just to add more pattern. I like this pattern. I love the busy patterns of a Zentangle. If you don't like it, that's okay, but you ought to try it. It's kind of fun. And add a little details to the mailbox. Some, uh, some kind of herringbone on the mailbox itself and some stripes in the pole. And now I am using the thicker pen, the number one, to add a line underneath my journaling squares just to give it a little bit, kind of pull it off the paper like a drop shadow a bit. And I think I forgot a little spot and that's what I'm doing right there. All right, now I'm going over to my watercolor pencils. These are the Cheapo Reeves, the uh, new ones that I got the other day that are surprisingly awesome. And they were like $15 for a set of 36. So I was totally psyched to find those. I'm using a uh, warm yellow because warm colors will come forward and that will help in our perspective. I'm using that cooler, darker green on the uh, the grass in the back because that's gonna push back the um, the land mass there and make it look a little bit a little bit further away make our house look like it's a little further away and give us a little more perspective um, I feel like I'm gonna sneeze okay am I gonna no I'm not gonna sneeze okay whoo that was good I don't have to stop my recording <laughs> I'm using that bright yellow on the big lollipop tree back there because I know I want to add some more uh, layers of color later so I wanted to have a, a kind of a lighter base. And I'm going over that uh, that bright dark, the bright cooler green with this uh, olivey color to kind of make it push back a little bit more, dull it down a bit. I didn't want everything to be super bright, even though this is a very whimsical piece. I wanted it to be a little bit more mature in colors. And I'm just adding some of that dark to the centers of my patterns in the foreground. Now, um, I think I'm going to move my pad of paper around in a second. There we go. I moved it around so that. It was upside down for me and right side up for you. And I've moved the tripod and um, yeah, behind the scenes, Ooh, behind the scenes information. I am using brown on my brick path and on my tree trunk and on my other tree trunk. As soon as I realized that I forgot to draw the wood grain and drew that in there. Um, yeah, this is kind of like a burnt sienna type type brown. You could use watercolors here or inks if you don't have watercolor pencils or if you don't want to take the time to color it in. It's absolutely fine. Do what you want to do. 
I am using some orange here in the house because I want it kind of brickish, but I also want it kind of bright. And again, whimsical because whimsical is the word of the day, folks. Word of the day. Uh, yeah, I'm just coloring in. That's pretty interesting, isn't it? Okay, now we're using some medium yellow on half of my Picasso sun face. And I'm also gonna use that on the sun rays. I am going around the edges. I'm leaving a little bit in the center, not too much because I want some lighter yellow in there in a moment. And more yellow, more yellow. I love the color yellow. I do, I love yellow and orange. I like orange and yellow and red. Those are my favorite colors. I like pink too and chartreuse. Um, so now we got this lemon yellow in the middle of my sun rays. So I think there's those subtle changes in color, just kind of add a depth, make it look really rich. I'm using a little of that same orange that I used on the house to go around the outsides of the sun rays. I love that sun. I'm really quite impressed with myself. Um, adding a little of that orange around my warmer side of the sun face too. It's like a sun moon face, but it's a sun. Hmm, interesting. Now I am going to color the swirls in my sky with several shades of blue. And I accidentally grabbed the different different shades of one I originally used. It turns out all right, but I was a little uh, going, hmm, I don't know about this, but it turned out all right. So really just grab a couple different shades of blue. And what you wanna do when you're doing this background um, is you wanna kind of alternate what blues you use. So that's why I'm skipping around with my blue pencil here. It's kind of like, um, it's kind of like just a light um, aqua blue. So I'm doing a few and then grabbing another color and doing some other blues. This one looks like the same color, but it's not. This is more of a, um, that was more of like a, I don't know, like a sky blue. So I did, those are two different colors, but they look the same. They look the same dry, but they look different once I wet them. It's very strange, very weird. Um, sometimes that's the case with watercolor pencils, especially. That's why I recommend swatching out your watercolor pencils. With the wax pencils and the oil-based pencils, they really, they're really um, accurate when you look at the lead and you and you color with them. But for some reason, the water-soluble pencils change quite a bit. And it's a funny little thing, watercolor, Pencils aren't really watercolor. They're more like a colored pencil, but they have like a vegetable oil binder and then they have some sort of soap or solvent. It's usually like a type of soap. It's very strange um, in them that make them liquefy once you put them to paper. So that's, you know, I, I every once in a while I get a, I get a comment on my blog. Well, ink tense pencils are not watercolor pencils. Well, actually watercolor pencils aren't watercolor pencils. So it's just kind of a, it's just kind of an interesting thing that watercolor pencils aren't really watercolor, but they do have very striking similar effects just like all media is related. I like to use a couple different shades of each color when I lay it down. It just gives us an interesting depth of color. And plus, um, this is a set of 36 colors. It's the entire set in the Reeves line, which is a very affordable set, which I mentioned before. But you're not gonna have as many color choices as you would with a more professional set. So you can layer your colors over when you color them and mix them. It's not a big deal. And it will make you a better artist actually. So when you go spring for the huge set of ink tents or Albright drawer pencils or you Derwent's or whatever you like, um, you're gonna know a lot about color theory and you're gonna make really wise choices. Now the fun begins. Uh, I have my water brush here cause I'm sitting on my porch and I'm certainly not bringing out a bottle of a uh, bottle of bucket of water. I just got my little water brush and I am doing all of the blues that are that kind of, um, I don't know what you call it, kind of like a, just a sky blue. I'm doing all those first. And then what I do is I just kind of uh, wipe off my brush and then I go to the next shade of blue. And that way everything doesn't turn into the same color. That's why I kind of skip around instead of just washing over the whole thing. If I just wet the whole paper in one stroke, everything would smear together and it wouldn't look very good. So that's how I keep the colors nice and bright. And um, I know that probably doesn't need explaining, but you know, there may be someone who's never ever used watercolor pencils before. And um, this would be, you know, some information they might need to, might need to know. It's kind of like a paint my number here at this point, which is just fun and relaxing. And uh, it's funny cause like at this point, I'm kind of like um, a little shy sitting on my porch coloring because um, I know that <laughs> I know the mailman is gonna come by shortly with a package. So I, I don't wanna be like the crazy person that is coloring in public, much less the crazy person coloring in public, videotaping themselves coloring in public. That's well, not like my porch is public or anything, but you know, people are walking by my house and thinking I'm a weirdo. Um, I like to limit the amount of people that think I'm a weirdo, surprisingly, in real life anyway. 
okay, you guys all think I'm weirdos, but you know, I'm like a, just a, you know, a friendly weirdo. I'm not like a dangerous weirdo or anything. Um, and now again with the, uh, the water, I just, I, there's something about when you've colored with water soluble pencils and then you add water to it. I don't know what it is. There's just something so fun and fabulous and fascinating about it. A three F triple threat. Love that. Um, yeah, but basically I'm just liquefying all of my pigment that I've put down. It's so much fun. And so when I did this class with the kids, what I did was I brought watercolor crayons and not my best watercolor crayons, but the kids watercolor crayons. And, um, so I didn't have to worry about anyone, any of them getting broken or lost. They loved it. Oh my word. To put art supplies in a kid's hand that have never used anything like that. It's just so, they're like, these are just regular crayons. I'm like, oh no, they're not. Color with them, trust me. And as soon as they started going over them, over them with the water, they were like, wow, these are so cool. So I was really happy to be able to share that product with um, with the kids. It was, it was a lot of fun. And uh, we had 13 kids in that class. It was kind of crazy because, you know, the last couple times in the summer I had tried to do the drawing class, I had like no students, I'd have to like kind of, if there are any kids floating around in the library, it's like, come on, come draw with me. You know, they're probably thinking I'm, who is this lunatic, you know? <laughs> but uh, they did enjoy it, but still it was nice to have a, have a really big full class. All right, and I see, so you can see how by adding a couple colors together, you get a nice depth in those sun rays. I really like that. All right, so there, I'm just liquefying the yellow on the uh, the roof and it kind of got a little muddy over the, the pens. I'm not exactly sure why, but we'll brighten that up with our traditional colored pencils in a moment. And again, with the two tones of color, it just gives it a really nice look. And I, I'm sitting in a rocking chair, so I apologize that I, I keep rocking or going up on my tiptoes and, and then the camera gets all shaky. All right, so we're just um, adding some Prismacolor pencil here. I'm darkening up the uh, that pattern again. I really want to get a really rich color here. So I'm going over with the chartreuse and I kind of have this olive going in the middle there, just tracing over some of my lines. I'm really loose with my coloring on this. Um, you would probably want, you know, this is the great, this is one of those wonderful projects to do and you're sitting at home at night, maybe your husband's watching football or your wife is watching, you know, I don't know, what do normal women watch? I don't know. <laughs> I don't watch normal women shows or your wife's watching the Vampire Diaries. I don't know. And, uh, you know, you just kind of, you want to spend time with each other, but you're not really into what she's watching or he's watching. So you can kind of just color. So it's, it's very, um, I don't want to say mindless, but it's very Zen-like. And that's the whole thing about Zentangle is that it's very Zen-like. I am just, um, adding some depth with some shadows here, just going in with my uh, darker olive green pencil, adding shadows on the, um, on the right hand side because my son is on the left hand side of the picture and I did have to kind of remind myself of that a few times because it is so whimsical that I have to remind myself yes there's a light source Lindsay don't just randomly put your shadows in there they should follow some sort of rule of light and pattern light and shadow light and shade um, even though this is an exercise mostly um, mostly dealing with pattern that's what's so great about Zentangle. So, oh, this was irritating. My uh, my pencil, I sharpened it three times, broke my lead three times. So I went upstairs and I microwaved that sucker for 10 seconds and it did make the paint bubble on the outside of it, but then I could sharpen it and use that to color in my little leaves. So really six to eight seconds is what you want to microwave your Prismacolor pencil if it breaks on you. So I have this medium green, I think it's lime peel I'm using at the bottom of the tree trunk and I'm going over it with that same bright chartreuse I was using in the foreground right over the, the whole top of the area to make it look like it's kind of the top of the tree is warmed by the sun and the bottom of the tree is a little bit darker. And doing the same thing with this tree, the darker green underneath all those little scallopy eaves there, all the uh, sets of branches, which are what the scallops really are, kind of the ends of the tree, branchy trunk, they not trunks, tree branchy ends. And then I'm going in with my medium green and topping it off with some chartreuse. I like to use three shades of colors, you know, it's kind of like when you use your Copic markers, you, uh, you just kind of go from dark to light. I really apologize for talking so fast and so much. I don't know why, what's wrong with me? I'm just obsessed, possessed. I don't know. Okay. Now we got some yellow going there on the rooftops, up on the rooftops, reindeer paws. Well, they don't really, cause it's sun and it's whimsical land. Well, you know, it's whimsical. I guess a reindeer could be on that rooftop. Why not? I didn't want to draw that though. I didn't even think of it actually till right now. All right, I'm going over the sun with yellow. You can kind of see how it really amps up the color as we layer more and more, um, more and more pigment. I, I really love the look of colored pencil over watercolor or watercolor pencil because it just, 
the watercolor is really great about putting an all-over wash and filling in the color so when you layer over that the color just becomes so much more rich and lovely and it's just such a wonderful technique. I hope you try it really on your next project and next time you're using pencils I hope you try an underpainting of watercolor because I think you'll be really pleased with the results. Does my mic sound poppy? This is my like first experiment try out with the uh with the microphone oh look my oil pastels are still, still sitting on my desk i noticed i really ought to pick up between uh projects that was from the garlic tutorial the other day um still sitting there yep it's not much cleaner now i did go down with the intent to clean this morning but i didn't get too far i always get distracted i don't know why <laughs> i don't know what i got distracted by i was working on something who knows oh yeah i was working on refilling my my pens that were going dry my microns because i got a request to so i thought well i had one i was about ready to pitch that one i was using earlier in this video so i decided to uh to refill it all right adding a little of the uh that fuchsia color into the uh the fuchsia areas of my picture that's my pencil box thought i'd share it there's a lighter purpley fuchsia color. I'm adding for highlights and depth of color. And now, oh, this is fun. I've got this uh, orange colored pencil, which I think is going to break on me and I'm going to have to microwave that one as well. Um, and I've also got this, uh, this brown. And what I'm doing is I'm adding shadows to the bottom side and corner on the uh, kind of the right, lower right hand side of each brick. And this is going to give us some really nice dimension. And the reason I'm doing it on that side, and I got a little confused at the beginning, is because I wanted to um, make sure that that sun, the light is hitting it, and it is in harmony with the actual sun that I have on my paper. But doesn't that kind of give it a really cool look? I feel like illustrating another children's book now after, well, I'm watching myself do this and like narrating, I was like, oh yeah, that was fun. When I did the rainbow pants for Kelly Brooks Bay, that was a, that was a fun project. And now I think, oh, now I want to do another one. <laughs> Maybe we'll see in my spare time. Um, and now I'm going over with some of the uh, the orange I grabbed. I had to get another pencil because that first orange broke. So what you do is you microwave your pencil on high for six to eight seconds in the microwave. Let it cool for about, oh, about five minutes and then you can sharpen it and it's good as new. That's the bane of Prismacolors is that the leads are so soft that they break and at least microwaving will fix your pencil. I will, I'll sharpen it about three times before I say, okay, it's time to microwave it. I have a little cup of pencils on my desk <laughs> ready to be microwaved. It seems to only be a problem with the Prismacolors that I've noticed. Maybe some of the student grade pencils are like that too. I'm highlighting with a cream and it's really giving the, uh, the bricks on my house some substance. So I'm really happy with the way that's coming out. And um, in all of these things I'm doing with a color are just um, accenting the pattern that, I, that we put down with the pen. So everything that you build up on needs to agree with what you put down to begin with. So my shadows are agreeing with the sun. My uh, colors are and lines are agreeing with my pattern. So the pattern, the colors can unify an area with a lot of pattern. Um, and you can add shadows and add depth to your patterns with the colors. So, you know, try to keep everything in harmony as you're working. And I'm using a couple shades of blue on my um, window there. I decided to go back with my watercolor pencils because I had done this in the, um, in my original piece, I had added some more depth to the pen lines of my swirls, and I really liked the look of it with the watercolor. I didn't want to do this with the colored pencil because I wanted the sky to remain in the background. So if I went in there with regular colored pencils, it would it would give it too much of an impact, and it would bring it forward. And I wanted it to be in the in the background, but I felt like I wanted some more texture back there. And um, the way to get that was to go in there with the watercolor pencils. It would be a little softer, but I'd still get that depth of color that I wanted, but it would still remain in the background where I wanted it to be. And uh, kind of the neat thing now, if I'm using watercolors around all these colored pencil parts, if I go out of the lines, it doesn't matter because the, um, the colored pencil is gonna resist the water because it's, um, it's wax-based, so that's kind of neat. And just finishing up with my swirls. Finishing with the swirls, still swirling. Finishing with the swirls. Yeah, something about you put a microphone in front of somebody's face, like a real microphone, it makes you want to sing, doesn't it? <laughs> Does me anyway. I, I'll try not to subject you to that. That's that's not good. All right, boy, that background took quite a while. Yes, it does. I'm trying to think if there's anything else I should mention about this. Well, we've got this uh, very repetitive part happening. Yeah. 
actually I probably do more art journal tutorials if I could speed it up and voice it over. Now I'm putting some drop shadows around my uh, words because I want them to push out. I want them to kind of look like paper that's been pasted down. So I'm just taking the darker blue that I had used and adding it under my um, my journal blocks. And well, I guess a little over there too, because it must've needed it. Um, and filling in any spots that I might have missed. Yep. So, read any good books lately? <laughs> I feel like, oh my gosh, this is taking so long. I should have just cut this out, but I've already edited it now. Voiceover, I'm doing last. So there you have it, folks. All right, I really think that did improve the background. Okay, now I wanted to add a border, a frame to my piece. So I'm using some Distress Ink and I'm uh, applying it direct to paper. And I did put a little uh, dollar store cutting mat underneath because I didn't want to get my other pages in my art journal um, soiled, soiled by the Distress Ink. I didn't want them distressed. And now I'm using one of my homemade foam daubers, which is just a makeup wedgie folded in half and stuck in a bottle cap. Fancy, huh? That's what I'm using to apply and blend my ink out with. And I always think a black border really makes everything pop. I didn't use any black pencil. I used a black pen. So between the black pen and the black ink, I think it's gonna give us a nice uh, nice border. Now, because we have so much wax pencil on there, some of, it, some of the ink's not gonna stick. So I'm going in with a paper towel and just wiping it. So if there's any wet ink it's that won't absorb into the paper, it's gonna come off. Now that is an indigo pencil. Um, I, I don't think I ever use black colored pencil, but I love indigo for my shadows. In fact, for a lot of shadows, I use indigo and terracotta and they neutralize each other and make a really beautiful dark. Uh, I'm using indigo for some sh those shadows under those paper strips. I thought about maybe coloring the paper strips, but I think I kind of like them white because there's nothing else white on the paper. So it does kind of make them stand out. I think I might change my mind. I don't think I will though. I usually don't go back. Now again, with the indigo, I can add some some shadows around the doors, so make them look like kind of set back into the stones a little bit. Uh, anywhere I feel like I need a little bit of uh, shadow, I'm doing that. And there you have it. There is a finished work. Please give me a thumbs up and subscribe if you like this. Share it. Let me know what you think about the mic. And uh, thanks so much for watching. And as always, happy crafting.